Welcome to E-Commerce Australia podcast. We're joined by another great guest, a co-founder of an e-commerce business called Bubka, which started around two and a half years ago. I recently met Ari Segal, which, by the way, sounds like a famous actor's name. That's my father, by the way, just saying. What's, what's my, that? my dad's name is Steven Segal. Oh, legit. is it really? Legit, legit, yeah. There you go. <laughs> How good. Celebrity. Exactly, yeah. mate. So, well, um, yeah, I, meet, I recently met Ari, as you can just hear him there at uh, an online retailer. After some LinkedIn communication over the years, he's a, a worn-on, rusted-on listener to the to the podcast. So I thought it was about time we got him on and spoke to Ari about his his own ecom journey and uh, and lessons he's learned along the way, alongside his business partner and wife Alicia. Um, so Ari, welcome to the podcast, mate. Thanks for being on, Ryan. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure. I mean, by the, t- the time we actually met at the retail conference, I mean you've been in my ears for the last two years while I pack orders. So. Now it's real good to be here. <laughs> Fantastic, mate. So interesting on that. Do you feel like you got to do you do you feel like you know me after a couple of years of listening to the podcast? I think the one there's a few great things about your podcast and the one thing is you really do highlight the guests. Like, man, what I really want to know is when you when you how you made the transition of being a jockey to being an <laughs> SEO specialist. But yeah, I actually feel that, I mean, sometimes it's nice when a host kind of talks a bit, but what you really do well, I think, is you go on what the guest is saying. So actually, I feel like I don't, I, I could know you better, man. Maybe you're saying lean, lean in a bit on, on your past, but I really do love the format of the podcast and I love the name. I think how I found you is I literally typed in a Spotify <laughs> e-commerce Australia podcast. Like it doesn't get more SEO than that and up yeah. your podcast. So it's working. I'm like, don't change a thing yet. Perfect. Perfect, yeah. mate. I am. Um... Yeah, I'm, I've obviously got not a creative bone in my body. I just thought, you know what, e-commerce Australia does what it says, what it does on the box type thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and good. from an SEO guy like myself, um, absolutely, um, that was kind of a you know a clear a clear way to sort of name the podcast. But um, yeah, mate, I, the only reason I asked that question is I think uh, you know I think I, I read a stat the other day that if you listen to seven hours or consume someone's content for seven hours, they feel like a friend or you feel like they, wow. you know them. So it just highlights how important it is to appear on podcasts or do yes. video content or, you know, continuing. And that's one of the things I like about Bubka is you guys do some really authentic um, social media across TikTok and, uh, or getting onto TikTok, but also Instagram reels and Facebook and there's really authentic content. So I think from an e-commerce strategy point of view, that works really well. Um, but yep. also, yeah, I just was keen to get your, your insights into uh, whether um, listening to me every week for a couple of years is, um, has, you know, makes you feel like you know well, me. Well, I, I mean, I came up question. to you at the retail conference and just we liked, were speaking like old friends, so definitely it's worked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Mate, uh, but I appreciate the feedback. Um, mm-hmm. How I got from being in t- a jockey to, uh, to e-commerce or SEO is uh, is a long, long story, which I can go into in another podcast. But <laughs> essentially, I got to the age of 30 and couldn't keep the weight off so I was um, I picked the only trade that I was too fat to do my job at 60 <laughs> kilos so I had to find another job so uh, I ballooned right out now to 67 kilos <laughs> and so um, yeah but I had a fall when I was 30 and, and I, I was laying on the track and I it's thought good. you know what there's got to be a better way to uh, to, to uh, you know earn a living yes um, so I started in retail so that's sort of my you know my background in terms of I work for Mizuno I work for Dejima agencies who looked after Mizuno and Merrill and two times you and then got a got an opportunity you got a role at two times you and worked there for six yes. years in head office and so that's where my passion for e-com and, and retail comes in and then just added the digital marketing and the SEO side so but anyway mate enough about yeah, yeah. En- enough enough about me that was good Let's, thanks for that Ryan it's okay uh mate the uh, bubka so you yes. started about two and a half years ago tell us yes. tell us what uh what prompted that and, and what does Bubka do? Yes, I guess to, to go back to your story, maybe you lying on the floor thinking like, what am I doing with my life? Potentially that's what the thought going through your head was. That's a exact weekly occurrence. Same, <laughs> exact same thought going through my head when we had our, our first son, Kai. He, um, two and a half years ago, we didn't know what to expect as our first, but something that really caught us by surprise was this whole breastfeeding journey. Um, my wife had latching issues which is quite a stressful experience because the kid needs to eat, he couldn't eat, and we were forced, the midwife uh, wheeled out a clunky old uh, breast pump, which I'd never seen before, 
and expected leash to essentially pump six to eight times a day being plugged and tethered to a wall which was very isolating and a very special experience being with Bob and she had just been pregnant for nine months she wanted to walk, walk around be be free and this was the exact opposite and it was, it was it was quite it was quite a moment we both looked at each other and we we're like there has to be a better way and kind of in my previous life you know I was doing 10 years of b2b sales and consumer goods and retail solutions and loved it but but never always thought there was something different I always wanted to do, kind of do my own thing and and when that happened, when that moment, we just can see how this needs to be like a wearable kind of product. And I had tinkered with wearable stuff with running in the past. I just, can, I just could visualize the product. And straight away, we like, let Leash be the test case, my wife. And let's just see how this goes. And we brought in 100 samples and, and away we went. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. And so what was the, um, yeah, I guess... I just said, no, we're just two guys talking about breast pumps here yeah. on the podcast. So let's just not make it awkward. Nah, I've become I'm quite sure a you get that all the time. Yeah, kind of crazy. Um, yeah. How did I, how did you go to sourcing that the product? Did you have to try a few different manufacturers, or did you get lucky on your first one, or what was that process yeah. like? So, like a few years ago, when I was sourcing uh, these, these wearable devices for running, I kind of had a bit of a network already there in place. So, just luckily, just kind of said, like you know, let's bring in similar products to a cordless breast pump. There was one out at the time in the US called um called willow and another one in the uk called lv and they were about 700 australian dollars uh, landed so we kind of looked at like how can we kind of strip out some of these like the bells and whistles when all we really wanted was a high quality cordless discrete pump that you know a mum can feel empowered and pump on the go so that was our brief to them and yeah we came back i think it was like 15 samples and essentially because and we had um we had my wife's mother's group as our first sample uh, focus group so they they yeah they tried it and they gave us their feedback they would like it this way or they want to change this and over i think it was like a three month period it was pretty quick we came up with our first pump called the og and um and yeah we just launched it it was like a, a landing page and in shopify with one product and not from e e-commerce background I just started peddling the og in the sense i was calling everyone and anyone who just had a kid like in the news yeah, and I was hoping that would be our, our kind of go-to-market strategy. So we've learned a lot since then. But yeah, that was our first kind of first four to five months. Yeah, fantastic, mate. And um, you just mentioned before we press record that uh, it, August this year has been a significant month for you guys. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. This month um, is going to be our record month. We're very confident we hit it. We got four, four days left. But yeah, we 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 just about hit it today, and then. We've got three, three to four more days to go. So very exciting. And it's been a long journey. I think, you know, even though two and a half years, by the time we started doing this really full time was about to be over about 14 months. So yeah, really exciting to think that we could be hitting, hitting this number this month. And, and we still very much a lean operation. It's just me and my wife in, and I'll, uh, we've got a, a kind of a makeshift warehouse, but we are very, very happy about this. We, we do most things in-house, so it's, it's, a, it's a big, it's, yeah, we're very excited about that. Yeah, good on you, mate. Congratulations. That's Thank awesome you. and yeah. great to hear. And, um, yeah, obviously, uh, you know, it's no secret you've been following the E-Commerce Australia <laughs> podcast and implementing the changes that all of our special guests have, <laughs> have come on to the, to the show. And Trust I believe you've, um, you've reached out to a couple of them and, and sort of work with them as well now, which is um, a great story to hear as well. It's 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 been amazing having your resource has been, uh, yeah, whether it be e-commerce Australia, add to cart, uh, the two main ones, and I use it almost like a lead gen <laughs> operation <laughs> because I'm not from e-commerce. I had to kind of you know quickly like do an accelerated learning course, and when I hear something like Danny from Wellco and she started another company, Supper Supplies, like everything she was saying in the beginning, I was like, I need to speak to Danny, and we had a coffee and. Yeah, I even spoke to her yesterday. Um, but yeah, we, we've had a couple of catch ups and she's helped me create a bit of structure with my um, with my paid ads. It's been amazing. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's kind of any time I hear someone interesting, I just give them a buzz. <laughs> nice. Oh, I, love I don't to hear always that. answer, but yeah, try. No, that, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you, know, you know, Danny's Danny's episode was fantastic. And um, what I really got out of her was how well that she um, knows her customers and, and you know, the time she takes to, to generate all those sort of reviews for the, 
for Welco and uh, and even her own business as well. But kind of really trying to ask the, the customer a lot of questions and. I can see even in the last six months, you guys have changed that look and feel of the website significantly. It looks, it looks. Yeah. And um, I'm about to record another episode and another episode with Alan as well, who I, I know that you sort of catch up with regularly as well. Um, and yes. he, you know he's another brilliant person. That's the thing I love about doing podcasts is you get to hear different stories and meet some great founders or just some really really like high end. Um, experts in this area and um the things you can learn is incredible so i'm learning as much as you <laughs> it's crazy yeah and i can't thank yeah elon was a funny one i mean i don't know anyone in my network we played fantasy football together i showed him my first website we we're at the our end of your social which is sometimes can be a bit crazy but in that moment he did a quick uh, it was like a live loom uh, audit in front of me and quickly like t- told me how to fix things and since then we do regular catch-ups and another person i have to call out is Dana from a company called Rugabub, who just took me under, I, I met her at a baby care expo, started asking her questions, and to this day we meet up most Fridays, and we basically like kind of share notes, she's helped me with both my, my Facebook ads, website, and just general logistics, she's been amazing. So between those three people, and any anyone who's starting out an e-commerce uh, website, uh, company, I hardly recommend getting a little uh, community around you, it's so so helpful. Yeah, you're spot on there. Actually, I had a conversation with an e-com, with an omni-channel. Um, they've got a bricks and mortar store, and they've got uh, an online store, all unified through Shopify, which Shopify will love. Um, they're doing about sixty forty online to in store. But even just sitting down with that guy yesterday, and he's a great operator. He runs a great business. But just the things that he was saying about why they should, why consumers should shop with him, um, I said to him that like. From what all he's saying, none of that is displayed on the website. None of that is on your socials. None of that is on your content. So yep. I think it highlights the, the need to work with outside people that aren't as involved in your brand that can look at it quite cold or quite subjectively and go, well, this is what you say, but I can't see it. And sometimes when you're so far in your brand, when you're yes. the founder, like you're so far in the weeds that you know you perhaps overlook that. So I think it's really important to get outside people to to give you advice and have a look at things, you know, um, without kind of the, the rose colored lenses, essentially. Totally agree. hundred percent. Yeah. What's, um, what's been the biggest challenge that you've, you've faced mates in starting Bubka? Yeah. I think uh, being a, being a man in a, in a woman's world essentially was the first challenge, but I think that was something we knew from the get go. So I had to skill up and me and my wife, I mean, luckily I had my wife next to me teaching me a lot, but we spoke to a lot of lactation consultants before launching the brand had to really understand about the magic of breast milk and actually the magic of, 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 of nipples. And, and why I say that is during a breastfeeding <laughs> journey, nipple size changes three, could change three to four times. And that is basically, basically the difference between a great breast pumping experience and a very mediocre one. So it actually had nothing, sometimes it really has little to do with the actual product itself, whether a mum has a fantastic breast pump experience or not, it has more to do with the size and what I mean by the size is the small silicone flange that goes inside the breast pump. It's almost like the sole of a shoe, whether that has a great experience. So had to skill up was the first challenge. And I guess the second biggest challenge was coming from a retail experience, not an e-commerce experience, was having like the best, most effective go-to-market strategy when we didn't have any money, like a bootstrapped operation. So that was something that we learned the hard way in back to like our conversation about like growing it's all been through a lot of it's been through organic and getting leash in front of the camera talking about her experience um, has been way more impactful than spending a lot of money on paid ads which is what we did in the beginning so we learned the hard way and we've got a nice balance now between our organic strategy and our paid strategy Um, and then also we have a very very limited addressable market there's 300,000 babies born in Australia 96 percent will start mums will start breastfeeding and then half will stop breastfeeding at four months because it's just a bit of an in, inconvenience and right. that's kind of the opportunity and the restriction that we're experiencing so we kind of have these very very short time window to acquire a mum and the lifetime values is very restrictive because we don't have a range that will then go into the next milestone which is starting solids so we have to get them quickly we have to get through the marketing challenge very quickly you know, pre, you know, pregnancy phase is, is optimal, but if, the, you know, it's halfway through their breastfeeding journey, it's a bit challenging. You got to, because on average, someone will visit our website five to seven times before acquiring the, the product. But yeah. like, 
if we get recommendations word of mouth it's way more impactful we can speed them through that that whole th those hurdles so that's kind of something we try to do is really try get authentic voices to talk about babka give them a great experience and then they will then talk and recommend babka to other mums we feel is the best strategy for us but that's also a, a challenge yeah yeah okay yeah. yeah interesting and so that influencer you know if you look at the the mums or the you know the mums that sort of are I guess leaders in that leader uh, in that mothers group or that organise sorts of things are they the sort of influencers that will um, will promote your your brand just because it's such a such a great product like do you, is that what you're finding that those sort of you get some really good cut through with influencers yeah. who aren't necessarily trying to be influencers they just love the product and are passionate about helping other mums in a similar situation yeah we've had like a long journey to understand what that perfect influencer is like if we go back to two and a half years ago when i had a hundred og breast pumps and i was calling anyone in the news and not really getting anyone to answer the one person who did answer my call was yana pittman who just had twins she was a mum of six olympian also a doctor who wanted our breast pump because she was going on, on a talking circuit and she needed a wearable breast pump and she talked she posted about us and we sold out quickly and when we thought okay this is the strategy oh. like it was an amazing experience like to this day like she, she's been so pivotal and she's asked yeah just what we didn't realize is like that's a, a needle in the haystack it hasn't happened like that since and we yeah. we've realized that it has to be a very authentic person if you want to you know have a bubka ambassador or influencer so we do double down on just like micro influencers not ugc creators really like mum going through this experience they've, they've asked us about the product or potentially they purchased the product but then through shopify collabs they have now become an ambassador as well and to be honest the best referral we see is in mom whatsapp groups and um, we've seen okay. screenshots they, they blur out the names but a mum asking for what's your best wearable breast pump or breast pump and someone says bubka it's like we see the, the sales within seconds and we can't infiltrate that the only way that can happen is through product-led sales and that they had a great experience a great customer service experience and now they had such a great experience that they're going to tell everyone on the street like we had a call last week a mum of five she couldn't breast pump for four of her kids and now she could with the bubka she told us she literally tells any pregnant mother she sees in the street about bubka it's like that is the best type of of, of influencer but so so that's how we yeah we don't go just anyone who has a hundred thousand followers anymore it's very very targeted or it's a kind of like a very much a strategy of let's give them the greatest experience and then if they wanted to recommend us we can like, give them a shopify collab opportunity yeah okay yeah fantastic mate that's uh it's great great insights there and i think um it's almost like how do you foster that community right one of our mm. um you may have listened to another episode I had with um, Forest Superfoods, Justin Snyder, yeah. and he was all about community. So he's gone the other way. Instead of having a Facebook page, he's got a Facebook group. And he you can't advertise within that Facebook group. You can't run ads to that yes. Facebook group, but it does build a huge community. And it feels like that's what you're trying to do. Something yes. similar is build a community. And, you know, you look at the recent Shopify um, Australian retail report that come out and it was 51% of uh, people find new products through word of mouth. So as much as we do, you know, SEO, we do paid yep. ads, we do social, um, the best return on investment is obviously word of mouth. It's just a little bit harder to kind of generate or predict. But it's um, if you're getting good word of mouth sales and you've obviously got a great brand and a great product and it, it's sort of building nicely, which sounds, um, sounds really positive. 100% to, to that point, I think 60% of our sales are coming through like direct and then when we ask them questions it's a friend told me um or, or or heard about you guys through through this campaign it's it's not a smaller percentage is coming through our paid ads to be honest yeah 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 so um in terms of like let's look at the sort of the overall funnel like are you spending much time on that awareness stage are you creating content that educates people before they're ready like what it, what's your focus yeah. on marketing around that sort of top you know, awareness, consideration, conversion, funnel. Yes. Um, how much time do you put into that? Yes, so it was a bit of trial and error where we were targeting, essentially like trying to target every mum that, that every mum that just had a kid essentially. So three, you know, at that number in Australia, like 300,000 mums a year. But then what we realized is there's three points, like decision points within the breast pump uh, purchasing journey. and. The first one is a mum who's expecting. 
So how can we get in front of expecting mums? It's a breast pump is never top of mind, but it's it's other things like a bassinet, a pram, a cot, and so on. So how can we get in front of expecting mums? And that's like a real educational piece. And, and how we do it is we collaborate with products in that sphere, such as pregnancy pillows or TENS machines, which is when, when a mum's giving birth. So that, how can we partner with those brands and get in front of that audience? And secondly, it's just educating about, about breast pumps in the sense that you might be returning to work, you might want to be you want to do X Y Z while breastfeeding. Now you might have a toddler, and now you've got a newborn. So how do you how do you juggle? So that's where, and we do that through like Facebook. I would say essentially like Facebook ads and Instagram ads as our awareness, and then through Google ads and Google SEO. It's like how, how can we nurture that kind of awareness campaign and do that consideration and conversion. So that and it, so that's the first type of I guess profile is that expecting mum. The second one is at six weeks. A mum now will start to look for a breast pump after breastfeeding exclusively for, for they say around six weeks plus. So how can we talk about the fact of like, you know, what have you done before and, and to now kind of the, the benefit of, of using a cordless wearable breast pump. And then the third one is around four months, a mum returns back to work. And with a corded pump, it's almost impossible how you return mm. to, to the workplace. But with Bubka, it's very discreet, it's on the go, rechargeable. It really does lend its hand to the fact that mums are returning to work quicker than ever before and how they can use Bubka in the workplace. And we actually are starting to partner with workplaces around that. So it's just around like the two kind of pillars is like partnerships and then kind of different creatives in, with, within, within Facebook ads, how, how we get that awareness. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Great to hear that. Um, how, how, how have you gone with running ads with sort of the product that you have? Has, yeah. uh, has Facebook banned your ads a couple of times? Or? Yeah, 100%. Google's been harsher, actually. Yeah, I'm finding that at the moment, to be yeah. completely honest as well. Yeah, that was, it's been super frustrating. And like, the, you're always having to give a, like a bit of an explanation how we are, you know, we are, we are breastfeeding brand, helping mum, you know, free the nipple. I don't know. It just seems like it's like the whole, like uh, it just doesn't seem to have translated into the, the Google Google land yet about about the, the benefits of, of promoting these products so so that that was a bit of a frustration but we, we seem to be on their good books now the bigger issue is we thought um it, it it needs to be an authentic creative so a kind of ugc just talking about their experience even can can be a bit staged what we what we feel was kind of a mum do it going about their normal breast pumping experience but not so much just like talking about the features just a day in the life of pumping while driving a day in the life while pumping while eating lunch with two hands. I mean, that seems like a simple thing, but it's not so much with other breast pumps. So very like like a digestible, simple tasks that you can do with a Bubka wearable breast pump, which you, that you can't do with other breast pumps in the market has really worked well for us. So yeah, it's an, basically an, an authentic creative really works well. Yeah, brilliant, mate. Love to hear that. And yeah, I, again, another reference, another episode with Ben Fitzpatrick on Web Profits. And he was uh, suggesting, yeah, that the single biggest um, barrier or the, the single single biggest um, thing that he sees is you know having a a content system that a, a system I'll start that again have it has a, an, a way to be able to systemize content yeah so you're continuing to create that creative because it does burn out pretty quick and yeah you do need to get some different looks and feels and on, yeah. on your creative if you're running uh, meta ads as well so you we, we sort of address the where where your sales are coming from at the moment we're coming into um this episode will be live sort of end of september which is obviously starting to get to a pretty crazy season for black friday cyber monday click frenzy christmas singles day all of these big sort of periods coming up and there's a lot of discount strategy on on display which um you know you can be either for or against personally i don't like it but i do understand it where do you guys sit with the Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Christmas period? What, what's your thoughts coming into this year? Yeah, I think this year, so last year was our first proper one since going into full time. And I think the learnings there was we could have gone a bit earlier. So this year we'll go a bit earlier, like any other brand. Like but yeah, every we'll, brand, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we'll go earlier than them. We'll, we'll be the earliest. We should go live, uh, live in September. No, we'll, we'll go a bit early, <laughs> earlier than last year. And we've used a lot of lead up campaigns that we're doing now in kind of building our, our list. So we're gonna, we don't use email marketing as much as we should. And that's something, you know, with resources, education and so on, but that 
a lot of our campaigns has been around targeting that expecting mum we spoke about in the beginning of a kind of the the the, the, the journey. So we, we had breastfeeding a month in August and we got Father's Day coming up, which we kind of talk about how, you know, a breast pump can can help a dad get more involved in the in the feeding the feeding journey. Um so we're doing a lot of these campaigns that they, they normally are giveaways, but also we we capturing leads and emails that we can then use comes you know, comes the Black Friday, Cyber Monday promotions. And we'll do like a lot of lead-in promotions. We won't just go with one hot price. We'll be leading and we'll target different products. But then comes Black Friday, will be like one hot price point. And then for Christmas, we're going to go more on a gift. And we've got more products than, than we did last year. So we've got more products that you can gift. The breast pump's a tough one to gift. One of our yep. products called Silver Nipple Soothers, which is, is great for any breastfeeding mum. You don't have to be a breast pumping mum. And that's something we're going to really promote this year uh, comes Christmas. Okay, fantastic. Good to hear that. Mm. Um, so that was kind of uh, evolves to sort of my next question around, uh, you know, you've got the breast pump, but then, yeah, what's the next purchase? Like how many times I'm assuming they just buy a breast pump and then that's sort of all they need to yeah. get them throughout that period? Yeah, it's been like the biggest challenge with kind of that lifetime value of, of, a, of a customer. We're paying, you know, high customer acquisition cost and then knowing that, there's a low chance you're going to buy another breast pump. So how we've tried to combat that is we have brought in accessories this year. So there's um, there's milk bags, which is for storage, they're, they're reusable. So we had to kind of differentiate what's on the market. So all our accessories are reusable, eco-friendly, and to kind of, yeah, that's kind of part of our brand. So we've got milk savers, reusable milk bags. We've got silver soothers. So instead of using lotions and lanolin on cracked nipples, you can use uh, silver, which is fully reusable and, and much better. Uh, there's no harmful chemicals, etc. And then eventually we, we, we're going to have to decide, like, how are we going to follow that shopper? What I love about breastfeeding category is we're at the very early days of, of, of we almost follows a, a kid's life you know they've they were just born they're now breastfeeding and now we know they're going to get into starting solids and weaning and then they're going to start to walk and they're going to start and we can literally start to think about what's the next product in that kind of like in that in that journey of this human which is kind of scary but it's it's also very cool so uh, we're going to keep having to come up with i get i think some more products to kind of increase that lifetime value because it's it's a bit of a difficult one yeah, yeah, nice, man. That makes that makes total sense, and um, yeah, obviously, uh, you know, it sounds like uh, onwards and upwards, mate. Are you guys looking at sort of opening up a, a wholesale sort of? Um, you're trying to get into that wholesale market and yeah. get your products into other stores to help with some volume. Hundred percent. So that's kind of my background. So we wanted to kind of make sure we get that e-commerce. Uh, strategy kind of down pat and we're still working on it but it's in a good place and and from my physical retail experience when you walk into like a chemist warehouse as an example breast pumps are locked behind the the register it's considered a high value item no one really knows what size you are it's a very clunky experience so we've kind of revolutionized that experience for the online so it's a curated experience where you do a quick quiz on what size you are and then there's a recommendation process of this is the breast pump for you based on the type of pumping you will do but now we want to bring that to the physical retail and how are we going to do that is that we got a product range now where all the sizes and when i talk about the sizes, i'm talking about the flange sizes come in one breast pump so mum doesn't have to go and to a change room take out a nipple rule and try out there that that whole that whole experience so we've actually partnered with five boutique retailers and we've got that process down pat now and then we've have a target of this year of trying to get into 100 boutique retailers and then going into the big box like bunting as an example but we've really using it as a test case i feel it's like a a one-shot uh thing with with big with with big box like like baby bunting we want to get it really um organized and well executed in independence first before going there yeah perfect man it's, it makes sense and yeah, the the big guys. Uh, yeah, it's it looks great and sexy, but it's not always the case when you're yeah. working on their terms. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it sounds like the the strategies. Um, you know, really sound. So uh, yeah, mate, congrats on that. Looking great. forward to watching sort of Bubka uh, continue to grow over the the coming uh, years. It sounds like you you know you're humble enough to to know what you don't know and get expert advice, which. Yes. Um, I think is um, a great trait for all successful founders to have. Yeah, mate, just um, th- thanks for jumping on the podcast. I don't know if I've got any more questions for you. Um, I'll ask one more question before we go. 
How do you know your customers? What what mechanics do you have in place to talk to your customers and understand their needs? Yeah, so um, I don't know if this is a great thing. We're a small operation, but the first thing we do is when a mum purchases a breast pump, it's a nice email from Leash, and we we, we give them our like a, a WhatsApp number, and yep. essentially we like we there we there from the beginning, and and, and mums will ask us many questions. And they give us recommendations, give us tips and tricks, and it's been a great. It's been a, how we what we do with all this raw inf- data, which is amazing, is, is like our next step. We have lots of feedback. Mums love when you give them a, a number, they will use it. You know, versus just like hello at Bubka, they love to to, to message. They'll give us pictures. They even give us ways how they will do it differently. So that that has been the, our biggest learning is we kind of we've kind of adapted. So our first product was the OG. We've come up with two breast pumps since then which are iterations on what our customers were asking for so that's been our, our biggest thing is we've kind of like, i i don't know i don't use the product so i was kind of forced into that but even leash who you know is to return to work after our first kid we've had to leverage off mums that have used our product and then we want them to give us feedback and and then we can put it back into our business so it's it's also automatic with with our email flows we always ask for feedback and so on but the biggest thing has been just having like that kind of like casual WhatsApp conversation with our customers. Yeah, I love that. That's so good. I, you know, I think yeah. that sometimes um, that the unscalable things are what help scale your, yes. your business and, and especially at the, at the level, the, the size that you guys are now, um, I think it'd be really um, a really good level of support if the, the, the mom or whoever was purchasing the product had, had a WhatsApp um, message to be able to just to text anything they like. Yes. Yeah, sure, when you get bigger and bigger and bigger, that's going to get a bit harder and harder to do. But I think that customer service is really important. You know, not only are they talking about your product, but they're also talking about your service, I'm sure, and, you, you know, and, and those sorts of little touch points, which, um, you know, which just go a long way. 100%. So, um, good on you. Yeah, yeah. Like, mate, I'm really um, excited as to how, you know, to watch you guys grow. And, um, yeah, thanks for being on the podcast and, um, and looking forward to, you know, hopefully have a, a great sort of end of end of season and you can hit some more record months and um yeah we'd love to have you on again soon thanks so much ryan and, and if this is going out in september um i'm going to create a promo code literally as this podcast ends let's call it record month 30 get 30 percent off any product at babka any expecting mums even dads out there give give your wife or partner the gift of um of babka so thanks ryan for having me on and yeah look forward to continue listening and thank you for for helping small businesses out there. We really appreciate so, it. Record month 30? Yes, record have month you, 30. Bit long. Have you have you created that yet? I'm going to do it this second. Record oh, yeah? month okay. 30. Yeah. Record month, record month 30. 30%. Sounds great. Uh, yeah, jump on that. Do you have gift cards? That was one of my questions I, I didn't get to. <laughs> it's on my to- uh, it's, it's so bad. I'm going to do that too now. It's been <laughs> on my to-do list for about a year to just do gift cards. Like, I don't know why I wouldn't. I'm going to do gift cards. So, someone keep me accountable record month 30 should be live and i'm going to have gift cards in the store i'm going to do this as soon as this ends thank you Ryan. yeah i i think um you know as we come up to this gifting period sometimes yeah. it's like hard to know what do you get what do you get you know mothers or expecting mothers or you know there's obviously you know the the standard as you said the bassinets and the prams and all that kind of stuff but a nice uh, nice voucher from bubka would be a great way to um a nice easy one, a last minute gift perhaps, or something extra to throw into the card. Um, so yeah, support a, a nice local business. Where are you guys based? I didn't ask that off the top. Sydney, isn't it? It's close to Bondi. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Mate, um, doing it tough out there at Bondi. We, um, we, like, we're currently living at our in-laws, which is, which is yeah, I'm gonna lock in tough. No, 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 they've been super helpful. <laughs> like we actually so lucky, but it's, um, yeah, we very much a bootstrapped operation. But yeah, anyone in the area, in the e-commerce community, I need, a, I need build up my my re equation uh, group no no just please reach out whenever like i'm always open for a coffee or chat and i want to pass it forward for all the amazing people that came before me uh, who've given me that that the, the amazing information so thanks uh, thanks and reach out please no worries mate yeah great to hear your story best of luck to you and leash and um yeah here's to a successful 20 end to 2024 and a great 2025 thanks ryan cheers mate thank you mate